It sounds like a lot of the knowledge that's coming from the people that have come from Queensland is probably a knowledge that's been passed down through the generations and hasn't been changed around by people's infiltrated ideas. They've got so much knowledge to share. It's a knowledge that seems to still be proven and understood. I think a lot of people here in Australia could look at and listen to and learn a lot from. Just the fact that it happened, I think, is a highlight. The fact that we're starting to blend two cultures that I think we've been very remiss not to have blended in the past. It's sad for us when the Victoria people lost their homes. Like our lady said, you know, it hurt our hearts up there when you guys had the horrible fires down here because, you know, it doesn't need to happen. Seeing the country and the people and the plants and animals like that was heartbreaking. Mm. I think your codes say, from an ecological perspective, from a mm. science perspective, that yeah. once in five years or once in ten years, mm. you know, that's too long. Your fuel loads must be ridiculous. Because yeah. mm. our burning's about government and mm. politics. There are guests uh, on this earth here, guests. Mm. So my name's Dorothy, Dorothy Puchamankara. Hello, I'm Dawn from Aracoon. I'm a traditional uh, Dawik Munkun tribe from Cape York. We show them how to burn the bushfire the right way, as we do at home. I'm Tim Lavers. I'm from the Indigo Valley. Been part of the grassy Oxwoodland projects for about four or five years now. Today we've had a, an interesting time looking at grassy box woodland and we've seen some culturally significant sites there which have been very interesting. It's been terrific listening to people from other areas and their experiences with grassed areas, their treed areas, and listening to the different scenarios of, of burning, which is a new thing to me. I think there's a lot in it from what I've learnt today. We in the past have been taught one or two things with using fire which have mainly annihilated and destroyed pretty well everything that was on the ground. Where I've been taught through Taipan, that is against the law. That's no good, you know, if you've been punished for that type of burning. Because everything relies on that canopy. You know, all your insects, the flowers. If you want the animals to stay here, they have to burn this time of season. Every year. You burn it. Now it's the time you can burn it. The moisture is still in the ground now and you need that wind to help push that fire through nice and slow. Mm. And everything that grows in between these grasses, all the uh, things that need that moisture, they'll still be protected from that fire. Small little circles, not like big long lines. If you have a big long line fire, it, it, it's hot. You know, if you have a, a, a circle fire with a a lit, like a little patch at the top, like that, it burns back on itself. And that also keeps it nice and cool. Once that fire joins up, it feeds itself with its own heat and it goes through everything and it burns everything hot and not much left. Before you light that fire, you can find these and see how I've done just clean around from it. Because they live a long time, these trees, and they're used to fire. They need fire to regenerate, but if you put that fire in too late and it's hot, it will kill this tree. But if you have a cool fire go through, it'll be okay. And so will all the other things that grow between these grasses, the sundews, the lilies. This is important because it's gonna grow into that big tree and as these big trees die, they need these little ones to come up. The other thing is because this area is so wet, if you don't burn it at the right time or you don't burn it at all, these seeds on here, even though this grows from a tussock, there's no room for the babies to come up. And because it's so wet, they rot. If it's wet all the time, they'll rot. And so there's no regeneration of those grasses. You know? So don't burn it all at once and all hot to try and get it done or whatever to fit in with your work plan. I've heard some terrific stories of Queensland where they've taken hold of this and it has really enhanced and brought the bush alive back to what it would have originally been. If we can have that here in our local area, it would be a terrific asset to the community. This is 
a new thing to me where we can preserve and encourage the grasses and the shrubs and the trees to actually come back. With me being a, a native seed collector and propagator of plants, I like to find out more info of how we can treat ground areas and also treat seeds in a different way. And I think it's very important to be involved in projects like this because caring for country has a lot of benefits to every participant because it's increasing the value of our environment which just has to be conserved and preserved and brought to the ultimate of its condition of what we can. The journey in farming is a journey of learning and uh, I'm really interested in the environmental side of, uh, of the farm and also we're getting more into developing a sustainable environment for both production and also the environment, particularly in involving uh, native species such as the grasses. Just meeting the elders from the Cape and, and knowing a bit about the practice of burning in the north, uh, applying it back here in a um, care for the country sense as well as a practical sense for um, you know reinvigorating native pastures and that has been very helpful. All the grasses cure at different times so do each of the ecosystems so you're burning all the way through the year yeah. not just getting a kerosene torch and <laughs> along one side and woof you've got a massive big fire that feeds itself. Peter just from a farmer's point of view mm -hmm. The burning actually burns up a lot of the, the nutritional value. It's a lot of the, um, yeah, the, the minerals or whatever are actually being burned going away as smoke. One of the really important things to remember is that when we think about fire, most people think about fire in a hot fire context. So when you actually burn a hot fire, pretty much everything leaves the site. So nutrients, all of this stuff here, gone by the wind, evaporates, you know. But if you look down in here, you can still see how green everything is in the middle. But you'll watch now with what's happening here. There's actually still a lot of materials that are still sitting here on the site. And that's actually really good for your soil. Yeah. Because it's going back into your soil. It's like a compost on the top of the soil. But also, because it's not charcoal and completely left the site, yeah. it helps hold the soil particles together. I've been very pleasantly surprised. I was kind of had in my mind, I said, keep looking for the correlations and the fact that they're working with native grasses and woody kind of plants and that's what I've got a lot on my property where they use fire to manipulate or encourage the production and also yeah, the survival of the different native pastures. We use stock management. I've got a grassy woodland site where we're trying to encourage not only the, the woodlands aspect but also the native pasture aspect and, um, and it's just interesting that we may try a bit of fire in there just to see whether that can also be another management tool that we can use. Full bend, mm. not yeah. hot, yeah. otherwise it, it'll melt you. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly with respect to fire management, the timing of, um, of burning is very significant, I've learned that. We will burn uh, more regularly and, and at a, be very more, a, a lot more conscious of the timing of burning. And, um, and probably uh, make it a year-round, you know, kind of situation with monitoring and the best times to burn. And burning grassland in winter, which, you know, it's a real challenge for people. Like, I'm sure if we'd spoken to a wider audience and said, look, we're going to go burn some um, native grasses today out in the bush, people would go, no, what? Well, it's too wet, you know, that won't burn. And what do you know? We don't have the depth of knowledge about how we manage, uh, particularly bush country. Unless you have the evidence, then it's hard to convince departments here. Part of that was getting that recognition for their old people. And they actually were awarded their honorary doctorates in 2005 for their fire knowledge and for their ecological knowledge. Evidence is it's an interesting word because you know you can pick up something and read it in a paper and think you understand it, but you only get this much, you know. You need to go out and learn properly. We're needing the use of fire, I believe, to return back to a, a natural landscape without the need of fertilisers and chemicals to, to try and improve you know, farming productivity. Because that way of farming is 
proving to be unsustainable. And I believe what today is shared with me is other people's passion and love of the land that has sustained them for thousands of generations. I believe we need to take all their messages um, on board for agriculture, for everything we do in this land. Um, we need to be aware of what's gone on in the past and to build on that knowledge. What we've lost in our Aboriginal heritage in this area, I think that's a, it's a tragedy. We need to get right into it and, and just preserve what we've got. Actually meeting these people was just absolutely fascinating. I see them in true life and they're just amazingly, they're just captivating people. And I know it's, it sounds superficial, but to be up close and just to see them and li listen to them and you can actually bring all that you've learned in your past through the media and through film or whatever, all of a sudden they're there. And it's the first opportunity I've ever had to actually speak to and listen to people from Northern Australia. I think it's been great that they've made this trip down. I hadn't had any realisation of the connection between traditional owners coming from so far away to, to connect to other people. And, and I think just talking the variety of other topics that came up, whether unrelated to fire management, but integral to a whole, you know, plant identification, plant uses, um, and some of the cultural things all tied together. It's been, that's, that's been a fascinating part of the day for me and uh, more than anything it's given me enthusiasm, more enthusiasm. Thank you for the opportunity, I really, really enjoyed today. Thanks so much. That was a really great experience, I really appreciated it.